Hey guys, this is Neil. Welcome back to my channel. Today I will be doing a very easy food illustration. We're going to be painting cotton candy and because it's so simple I decided to paint in five different colors. So with that let's begin with going over the colors. I'm going to be using my Holbein set with white pencil watercolor. So the first color we're going to use is compost blue, then the second is cobalt violet. For the pink we're going to use quin opera. For the green, I'm using permanent green and then permanent yellow deep. Then I'm going to use white from Pentel tube because I want to have separate whites for each of the color to keep the vibrancies. And I like how the Pentel has such tiny tubes that I can squeeze out only small amounts for each of the color. For this, I'm going to be using my size 14 round brush. And before we paint, I'm going to load my brush with just clean water and with that, I'm going to paint a fat oval shape on my page. It doesn't have to be even. I'm starting from the far left because we will also be painting all of the other colors next to it. Essentially, we are just creating a wet surface for the paint to travel and restrict its area of travel. So the first color I'm going to work with is the Permanent Yellow Deep. So you want to activate the paint with water and for this first layer I'm going to mix some white with the yellow to create a nice pastel color. Then I'm going to load my brush with the paint and I'm just dotting the paint in the middle of the oval that we painted earlier. Due to the wet surface, the wet paint will start to spread and while it's still wet, I cleaned my brush so I no longer have the yellow color on my brush. Then I'm going to do round strokes with just the very tip or like a circular motion just to make a fluffy texture for the cotton candy. Try not to overwork it, I still want the middle part to be darker than the outer part of the oval to create the nice fluffy illusion. Don't worry if the color is looking a bit dull because we will be layering more of the color later. At this point, I'm just establishing the base color. Now I'm going to repeat the step for the rest of the colors. Please don't worry if your ovals look different from one another, if one is a bit bigger or smaller, it's completely fine. In fact, if they look exactly the same, I think it will lose the human touch because no cotton candy is exactly the same. For the green, I actually decided to add some of the yellow to lighten it up a bit. This is completely up to you though. Then I'm going to mix the green color with the white just like the first cotton candy and I'm going to do the same technique which is the wet on wet by dotting the green in the middle of the wet area and then I'm moving it around with my brush. Remember to clean your brush beforehand or else the green will be a bit too dark. When I'm moving the paint around, I don't mind going slightly outside of the wet area. I want to actually create a bit of the fluffy texture too around the oval. Just make sure not to touch the previous one that we painted earlier or else the paint might travel when it's wet. So I'm just going to move through the colors one by one. I'm sure you guys already understand this first step anyway, so I'll get back to you when we're going to build the second layer later.
Now that I'm done with the first layer, I'm going to go back to the yellow cotton candy again. That way we have time to wait for the rest of the cotton candy to also dry. So for the second layer, I'm using the same yellow color mixed with white, but this time we're doing a wet on dry technique, so we raise the vibrancy of each of the colors. I'm going to do the same motion like when I tried to distribute the paint around, and that's to just use the tip of my brush and paint it in a thin circular motion. I'm leaving out a lot of unpainted area here to keep the lightness off the cotton candy so it doesn't look too bulky. I'm just adding a bit of volume by introducing a little bit of texture and contrast with the color. After I've placed down the paint, I'm also going in with a clean brush to smooth out some of the hard edges so the lines doesn't look too distinct because we will still be adding another layer after this one. I'm going to repeat the same steps again with the green color and I'm painting ahead as I voice over so this is the step where I clean my brush and smooth out some of the edges so you have a better understanding of it. As you can see by smoothing out the harsh lines you're actually creating like a bumpy fluffy texture whereas if you look at the first base layer on the other colors that we haven't built up on it looks quite flat. So I'm going to repeat all these steps again for the rest of the colors. Also if you're not into these colors you can also mix your own and just mix whatever color you like with a little bit of white to turn it into a cute pastel color. You can even make a multicolor cotton candy if you would like to. Some pinks, blues, and purples would look really cute. I'm simply painting something really easy so the steps are clearer for you to follow, at least I hope so, but you are really free to interpret this however you would like to. I think a while ago someone also asked me about layering and what is the point of layering. So hopefully this simple illustration will make it a little bit more clear as to what layering brings out to a painting. Moving along to the third layer, this time I'm going to use the color as is without any of the white. So we're no longer creating a pastel color, but this time we're just using the color as it is to create even more distinction between the lighter and the darker values to create more depth in the painting. Following the same circular motion, I'm going to paint in some parts of the area only and always remembering to keep some negative spaces or else the layering we did from the base layer till the third layer will be a little bit redundant if we're just going to cover it all up. The purpose for layering in this particular painting is not only to increase the vibrancy but also to increase the tonal value of the painting and creating more texture and depth as I mentioned before. So the third layer is essentially the same as the second layer but we're just using the original color so it looks a bit darker and after creating the lines I'm also going to smooth it out again with a clean damp brush so there are no areas left with distinct harsh lines.
Okay, so once you're done with all the three layers, I'm going to quickly do final touch-ups by using a clean damp brush again to smooth out any harsh lines around each of the oval. I want the outline of the oval to be nice and blurry so it looks really soft. Then I'm going to add a stick to the cotton candy and for this I'm going to use the color yellow ochre. I'm also changing into a smaller brush. This is a size 2 so it's easier for you to create thinner lines. I'm going to paint the same thing for all five of the cotton candy. Once you're done, we're going to add some fun splatters. So for the splatters, I'm just going to use the pastel version of each color again. And I'm loading my larger brush so it has a decent amount of quite runny paint. So it's easy for the paint to splatter everywhere. And I'm going to tap onto my other brush. And you can also do flicks if you would like to by running the bristles across the other brush. I'm going to do the splatters for each color. So I'm going to splatter yellow in the yellow area and green in the green cotton candy area and so on. Next, I'm going to add tiny bows to the stick of each cotton candy. You can paint it with the same color of the cotton candy, but I want mine to have different colors. So I'm going to just take the color of the next cotton candy and paint the bows that way so I don't get confused or miss any of the colors. As an example, I'm going to paint a green bow on the yellow cotton candy pink bow on the green cotton candy and so on. I'm also changing to a smaller brush again to make the job easier. After that, I actually went back and add more splatters because I thought the painting still look a bit empty and bare but if you like the amount of splatter you already have on yours if you're painting along to this then you can skip this part also when you splatter and accidents happen like having too big of a puddle land on your cotton candy you can actually either take it off or smooth it out with the rest of the cotton candy by using a clean brush the clean brush will absorb the extra liquid or if the paint is already dry, you can dampen your brush to reactivate the paint and then smooth out the surface. And yeah, that's pretty much it. It's so simple and easy and I hope you guys give this a go. It's a beginner friendly painting to have basic understandings of wet on wet, wet on dry techniques as well as splattering technique. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one and learned something new. Have a good day or night depending on where you're from and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!